Hello. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to install Arch Linux from scratch. To start off, you'll need the Arch Linux ISO, so go ahead and download it from their website if you haven't already. I'd recommend that you also install Arch in a VM before you try it on your real PC. That way you know the steps and you know what can go wrong. But in case you are doing this on your actual PC and you've already tried it on a VM, then I'll walk you through it. So. With that said, let's start the saved VM that I have that only has the Arch Linux ISO on it. Here we are. As you can see, it says root at Arch ISO, and we have pretty much a blank slate to do whatever we want on. But let's use it to install Arch Linux. So we will start by setting the keyboard layout. So if you use a keyboard layout other than QWERTY, you will be able to run this command. Let's go ahead and run it just to see. And you can see that there are quite a few to choose between. If you'd like, you can pipe it into less and scroll up and down. So once you've discovered the, one, the keyboard layout that you want, then just do load keys and then whichever keyboard layout you want. But it's QWERTY by default, so I'm just going to not. Next, it's time to verify that we're in UEFI boot mode. If you're doing this on an actual computer, you should have seen two options for your flash drive, one without UEFI and one with, or just one with UEFI. Either way, pick the one with UEFI. And in order to verify this, we will type ls slash sys slash firmware slash EFI slash EFI vars. And if you see stuff show up, then that means that we are correctly booted in UEFI mode. The next step is to connect to the internet. Now this can be a pretty complicated step if you're on a laptop that needs Wi-Fi connection. If, if possible, please consider plugging it into a wire before you continue this step because it'll be much simpler and easier for you. And you can always connect to Wi-Fi once Arch Linux is installed. The way that you would have to connect to Wi-Fi, by the way, is to use IWCTL, type help here, and it will show you all the options that you have. There are quite a few. So I'll leave it to you to navigate this menu and figure out how to connect to a Wi-Fi network if you really do need to do it. But for us, we are connected to a wire, so I'm just going to hit Control D to exit that. So we will check that our device is up and running our network device that is. So we will type IP link and you'll see there's one that says LO and there's one that starts with an E. The one that starts with an E is the one that we want. And you can see that it says up in the area between angle brackets and it says up after state as well. Those are the two that you both need to say up. And in order to double verify, we are going to ping archlinux.org. If we get 64 bytes back, that means that we are successfully connected to the internet, and so we can move on. First up, we're going to use the network to update our system clock. Just like that. And you can trust me that it is set correctly. And it will be updating over the network. The next step is to partition our disks. So this is a big step. Um, basically, what we're going to do is look at this table, um, figure out which one we are. We are on UEFI, and we are going to use a GPT partition label. I'll explain that in just a second. And we need these three partitions, an EFI system partition, a swap partition, and the root partition. Um, the swap partition is technically optional, but it is useful on Linux. It's basically an extra space for any unused RAM to go whenever you're running low on RAM. That is. So let's go ahead and enter parted. And through this command line interface, we can partition the disks. So let's do print to print which disk we're on. You can see that we are on slash dev slash SDA. There's an unrecognized disk label, which means it's unformatted entirely. This is a fresh disk. It's 107 gigabytes in size. And the rest of this is pretty much irrelevant other than the partition table, which again is unknown. So in order to fix that, we are going to do make label. 
and it's going to be GPT, like I said earlier. GPT is different from MBR in that it uses um, UIDs, or um, GUIDs in specific, to identify each disk or each partition. And it's basically more modern than MBR, which is the legacy partitioning scheme that Windows still uses. So now we have print, and you can see that it's successfully detected our partition label as GPT. Um, in order to make partitions, we type make part, and we get to name it. But for this one, we're going to make the EFI system partition, so we don't need to name it. We also will set the file system type to be FAT32, and we're going to start it at the very beginning of the disk, so 0%. And it's going to end at at least 260 megabytes. So let's set it to 260 megabytes. And no, I'm not mispronouncing that. That's exactly how you are supposed to say MIB, which is megabytes, but in binary. So megabytes. It's a bit of a silly word, but you'll get used to it. Next, let's create our swap partition. Make part. No name. File system will be Linux swap with a hyphen in between. It'll start where we left off at 260 megabytes, and it will end at, I don't know, let's give it eight gigabytes, or gig, eight gigabytes. Gosh, that's hard to say. There we go. No complaints from parted. Make part. And this is our root partition, so we get to name this whatever we want. I'm gonna call it root. File system type should be ext4, most likely. It will start at 8 gigabytes, and it will go until the very end of the disk, so 100%. And now if we type print, we will see that our partitions have been created success bleh, successfully. For our first partition, we need to set it to be the EFI system partition instead of a regular FAT32 partition. So in order to do that, we say set one boot on. And if we print again, you'll see it has two flags now, not just boot, but ESP, which stands for EFI system partition. So it has successfully been recognized. All right, we can press Control D to exit this. And we have successfully partitioned our drive. Now we need to format those partitions and get them ready for use. So for the FAT32 partition, we are just going to say make fs.fat slash dev slash sda1, because that's partition number one. Next up, we will initialize the swap partition, which is make swap slash dev slash sda2 and that's done and finally make fs.ext4 slash dev slash sda3 and that one will take a little longer because it's a much larger partition but it should be done in a second next we'll mount the root file system to our slash mnt directory on the disk keep in mind that we're still operating from the flash drive here so we say mount slash dev slash sta3 slash mnt. And on slash mnt, we're going to make a directory called slash mnt slash efi. And there we will mount the efi system partition. So mount slash dev slash sda1 slash mnt slash efi. No complaints from Arch. And finally, we will also mount the swap partition, but it's a bit different than mounting it, so we'll have to type swap on slash dev slash sda2. And if you ever, for any reason, want to stop swapping on that, then just type swap off. Like this. But I'm not going to do that, so I press control C. Next up, we need to select the mirrors that we're going to use. So Pac-Man is our package manager, and it has many different mirrors that are either close to you or very far away from you. And the ones that are installed on the ISO already are not necessarily the ones that are close to you. So in order to fix that, we will type reflector hyphen hyphen score 10 hyphen hyphen save slash etc slash pacman dot d slash mirror list. And that won't take more longer than a second. If you need to s sort by other um, considerations such as speed, then you can do reflector hyphen hyphen help and see how to do that. For example, for the sorting by speed and getting the fastest n of them, you would do hyphen f space n. 
All right, now we have the mirrors set up. And we will have to install packages on the actual um, partition that we made. So let's do that with packstrap. Packstrap slash MNT base Linux, Linux firmware. And we can also install any packages that we want here. So I'm going to install nano network manager. Um, let's see what else. I'll install Vim for myself. Anything else we could foresee needing. I think not. So that will take a moment to install. I'm going to speed this up. All right, now that that's done, we can generate the file system table. The file system table tells the computer which um, partitions to mount on startup. So in order to do that, we'll do gen fstab hyphen capital U, this stands for UUID slash MNT. And we will put it into slash MNT slash etc slash FS table. There we go. And if you want to verify, you can always cat it. You can see slash dev slash sda3 is there. It's mounted as slash. It's an ext4 partition. There's also slash dev slash sda1 mounted as slash efi. And it's a vfat system partition. And slash dev slash sda2 is non formatted partition that is swap area. So it looks like we're configured correctly. Next, we can do something called the trut. And this acts as if we were um, booted into the installed system already, but we're not quite installed yet. There's some more to do. <coughs> so first up, we need to set the time zone. This sets it to central time because Chicago is in the central time zone. We will also run this hardware clock program, which I don't exactly know what it does, but it does seem to be essential. So we will do it. Next up, we're going to edit slash etc slash locale.gen. And we need to find enus.utf. Eight. Here it is, and just remove the hash in front of that. And we will type locale hyphen gen, and it will go ahead and generate that for us. Next up, we need to make um, etc slash locale.conf. And we'll just type the, the locale that we entered there. There we go. And if you set the keyboard layout in step one of this video, then you'll need to also edit slash etc slash vconsole.conf and set key map equal to the key map that you're using. Next up, we'll create the hostname file. This is the name of your computer, so name it whatever you want. I'm going to name mine Kyle Arch VM. And then make sure you remember the name that you gave it because we're going to go to slash etc slash hosts and type some stuff that has to do with it. So first we'll define localhost. Then we'll define localhost again, but in IPv6. And then your host name dot local domain. And then again, your um, host name. And there is a little footnote here that's important. If your system has a permanent IP address that is assigned by the router, 
use that instead of this IP. In ramfs we can actually skip this step because it was run whenever we used packstrap earlier. We can set the brute password so that we can log in. That's kind of important. There it is. And we can finally install a bootloader. This is the most important step because otherwise you won't be able to boot into this nice system that you just installed. We're going to use grub for the bootloader and we're on a UEFI system. So first up we're going to run pacman to install some more packages. pacman hyphen capital S, grub, EFI boot manager, and OS prober if you have Windows and you're dual booting, you'll need OS Prober here. There we go. Now, it says to mount the EFI system partition on the wiki, but we've already done that, so we'll just use it. So we will type grub install target equals x8664 EFI, EFI directory equals slash EFI, bootloader, ID equals grub. And there we go, it's done. If we list slash EFI now, you'll see that there's an EFI directory, and there's a grub directory in there, and there's our EFI file. That's what grub installed for us, and it'll tell the hardware to boot grub. Next up, we need to generate the configuration file for grub, otherwise it won't know what to do. So in order to do that, we need to edit slash etc slash default slash grub. And we can do whatever we want here. I'm going to set the timeout to zero so that it starts instantly instead of letting me choose. If you don't want that behavior, then don't set it to zero. You can set grub default to saved if you want, and it will boot the last thing that you booted through grub. And just make sure you uncomment the last line here that says grub save default equals true. But of course, for me, I'm not dual booting, so this is not relevant, really. And then we'll quit the file. All these other ones you can tinker with if you want, but not necessary at all. All right, and then in order to make that configuration file, we will do grub make config hyphen o slash boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg. And this will find all of our OSs. You can see that it found Linux. And that's actually it. We're done. Congrats on installing Arch Linux. So let's do some extra stuff just to make this system a little more usable. First, let's reboot into it. Hmm, I'm going to reset it. Ah, that's the problem. Let's not have this plugged in anymore. There we go. Now we can log in as root. And type in the password that you entered earlier. If you remember it, that is. If you don't, then... It's kind of tough. Ah, just kidding. You can always plug in the USB drive again, boot to it, and then change the root password from there. All right, let's make a regular user for ourselves. User add, hyphen M, make a home for him, hyphen G, wheel, add him to the group wheel, and my name. And set a password for him. There we go. And let's install the sudo package. Uh oh, we're not connected to the internet anymore. That's okay, it's very easily fixed. System, CTL, enable, hyphen hyphen now, network manager. Make sure you capitalize it correctly. Now, if we try to install sudo, it'll work. There we go. 
and we can do vi sudo in order to edit the sudo sudoers file. But of course, we have to first set which editor we're using. So if you're using nano, set nano here, but I'm going to set vim. And down here, just remove this hash symbol in front of percent wheel. Not this one. This one will allow you to do it without a password required. And that's a bit unsafe for my book. So we will just use wheel. All right. And now we can exit and log in as our regular user. sudo hyphen v to make sure it's working. And there we go. Absolutely working. So now we can install packages from here. Let's go ahead and do an update just to make sure we're up to date. Oh, we are. All right, and finally, in this tutorial, I'm going to install the desktop environment. So, there's actually a list on the ArchWiki of desktop environments that you can use. Here they are. There are a bunch here. I'm going to choose KDE Plasma, and the package for that is called Plasma. So, let's do it. sudo pacman-s plasma. And just press enter here. And here I'm going to install Noto fonts instead of new free fonts. I just like it more. And just press enter here. I don't know what these mean. They're probably important, but I don't see the difference between these two. And this is going to be a slightly long install. But when you're done, we will be able to enter some commands to start up a GUI like you see on other Linux distributions. All right, now that that's done, we can figure out how to log into this thing. sudo systemctl start sddm. This might be different depending on your desktop environment that you chose here. For GNOME, it's gdm. For xfce, I believe it's lightdm. And as you can see, we are starting up into KDE now. There you go, you've successfully installed Arch Linux. Congratulations. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I'll see you in the next one.